Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is an MC Toy Porsche 356A. These castings can commonly be found manufactured by MC Toy successor Maisto. This one has been scratched up badly on all sides, with the plastics losing their coating and their wheels their trim. I'll be customising and changing the colour on this casting, I'll give it some detail and also swap out the wheels. Here's how a fairly fresh example looks, and here is the car the casting's based on. The 356 was Porsche's first production vehicle. It was created by Ferry Porsche and based on the Volkswagen Beetle, his father Ferdinand's design. Like the Beetle, it has a rear engine, rear wheel drive layout. It took Porsche two years from its 1948 prototype to manufacture 50 examples of the 356, subsequently known as the Pre-A iteration. In 1951, Porsche was the first and only German manufacturer to compete at the Le Mans 24 hours. The 356 SL won its class, and from there, the company gained some renown amongst enthusiasts across the globe. The same year, Porsche began to offer 1300 and 1500cc engines in the 356, in addition to the original 1100. This was later dropped in 1953 with the launch of the 1300S. Unfortunately, there's no sound on the paint strip today. The washing machine was running and it was louder than the caustic soda doing its work. The 356A launched in 1955. It had a number of small changes over the pre-A version. It was visually quite similar, though the windscreen was now more rounded than V-shaped, which had replaced the split windscreen in 1952. There was a bit more exterior chrome on the A. The engine choices were the 1300, 1500 and also a 1600, with the 4-cam Carrera engines now available as an option. These Carrera engines were previously only available on the Spyder race cars. Now when I dismantled the casting, I feel I must have knocked off one of the chrome bumper prongs. So I will reconstruct this by moulding one out of Vallejo plastic putty. Porsche had significantly upped production on the 356A, making over 21,000 cars in 4 years. The pre-A356 saw just 7,627 units built. The 356B launched in 1959, and production during its four year run increased to almost 31,000. There were further styling upgrades on the bodywork, modernising the car's look with some squarer edges. A second rear grille was added for the mid-1962 cars onwards. Technically, the engine capacity below 1.6 litres were dropped almost entirely in favour of the 1600, aside from the 2 litre Carrera 2 GS. The last 356, the 356C, launched in 1963 with few major changes other than disc brakes all round. It was the final release before its successor, the 911, went on sale. 16,678 356Cs were produced until they were discontinued in 1966. Until 1955, all 356s had been coupés but roadsters, convertibles and cabriolets followed from then on. The 356 set the precedent for its 911 successor, promoting evolution and functional improvement over superficial styling upgrades on a regular basis. So for my 356A, I've painted it this lovely shade of green. I opted for this after researching various colours that came on original 356As. 5605 Largo Green Metallic stood out for me in particular. To make this one metallic, I'll coat this casting off camera with Tamiya TS65 Pearl Clear. In the US, the 1955 356s imported by Max Hoffman had their name changed to the Continental, as he did not want a numerical name. Ford, the makers of the Lincoln Continental, then sued. The equivalent versions were then sold as the European in 1956, before quickly reverting to the 356 name. Today, these Continentals and particularly European Porsches are rare and valuable. Standard 356s are sought after by collectors in their own right, and are highly regarded in classic car circles. The most expensive 356 to sell at auction was Janis Joplin's daily driven 356C Cabriolet 1600SC. It sold for $1.7 million in 2015. 
Now for the detailing on my MC Toy Casting. I've already chromed the grille on the engine cover, the door handles, the sills, B pillars, headlights, hood emblem, turn signals and base for the rear light clusters. I've also painted on a white license plate and coloured the tail lights orange and red with further orange on the front turn signals. To finish it off, I've coated it in Citadel Gloss Null Oil over the cast lines and grills. My windscreen with wipers and rear view mirror now coloured in is fitted. Next I have to refit the interior to the base where it connects via some prongs. After that my base with green light wheels pre-fitted can be aligned with the body. It then pushes down over the two rivet posts and secures with a screw. So this is what my scratched up Porsche 356A by MC Toy looked like a while ago. I think these cars look great in silver, but for detailing purposes this casting absolutely needed its colour changing. It also needed some new wheels to really bring this custom to life. It does have a good amount of cast detailing, especially the rear end, meaning it was a prime candidate for some improvements. And here's how it now looks. Owing to its Beetle heritage, these near identical Volkswagen wheels suit the 356A rather nicely. The headlights and turn signals now really stand out against my metallic green coat. The pearl clear over the TS43 racing green works well. And here's the back end which has been totally transformed by a bit of chrome, sharpie and citadel detailing. My quick fix chrome bumper repair is looking ok too. In my opinion the wheels are definitely what make this custom. They're so so much better than the generic type it originally sat on. So if you like what I've done with the 356A, please leave a like. Let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe to see more. Please support on Patreon or via YouTube memberships if you can and my thanks to those who already do. All that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.